Okay, so um, how many of you were not there in last class, last physics class? Three. Fine, so last physics class we have finished the bridge program and we have started class 11th curriculum. Okay, I hope you know it. Okay, and uh, we have spent around one hour, we have just started actually. Okay, so we have introduced, uh, we got introduced to uh, various types of units that are there. Okay, why units are important in physics so that we can properly measure any physical quantity. We cannot measure the length in terms of seconds, right? Similarly, we can't measure, uh, let's say, mass in terms of meters. So that's why there are different, different units. Okay, so we got to know that there are seven fundamental units. Okay, and every other unit is derived from these units. Like velocity is derived from length and time. Okay, similarly, uh, each and every unit is derived from these seven units. So basically, the universe is seven seven dimensional. Okay, so if you know these seven physical quantities, you essentially know everything about that particular thing. Okay, now. We have uh, introduced these units and we came to know that, you know, since during those times, uh, different different units might be discovered at different, different places because a person who might be developing a unit of length as, let's say, kilometer may not know that somebody else is developing length as millimeter. I'm just giving an example, you know. It could be inch or yard or something else. So that's why there are different different units that are there. During those times, it was very difficult to communicate that, listen, we are all uh, doing, uh, we are all measuring length in terms of meters, so let's all do that. So it was very difficult to communicate. There was no mobile phone. Even for travel also, they used to use horses. So they can't travel using horse from US to India, right? So that, that's why there are different, different units. And several units came up. CGS unit was one of them, very popular. MKS was another very popular unit. Okay, so like that there are many units, many system of units who are using different different units for these seven basic quantities. Okay, so later on uh, as entire world was working together, all the economy got, you know, the, there is a global economy, right? So because of that, the trade and everything, all the communication that happens between different countries. So it made sense to create a single set of units so that it is easy to communicate and trade and also so on and so forth. So there comes uh, SI system of units. Okay, in SI system of units, I think you might have already got introduced to different SI units. For example, length is measured in meters, mass is in kilogram, time in seconds, like that. Okay. So we uh, got introduced to these seven basic quantities and also got introduced to SI system of units. And then we uh, we have also introduced two supplementary units, which are angles. Okay, angles basically measure the amount of opening. Okay, now that amount of opening. All right, so we got introduced to something called angles. What angle measure? Angle measure the amount of opening. It tries to quantify how much is the opening. All right. That opening could be between the two lines like this. This is called the, uh, the linear angle or you can say the planar angle. Okay. This is the planar angle which is measured in terms of radians. Okay. So we should know a way to measure the radians or the amount of opening which is a planar angle I'm talking about okay so how we have defined the angle the planar angle suppose this is the angle which represents by theta how we get to know what is theta the length of the arc by the radius. we should take this as a center take this as a center and draw an arc of any radius all right then measure this length if this length is L and the radius of the R was R, then L by R we say is angle. Understood? 
Okay, so this is the angle and it has no dimension as such because it's a ratio between two lengths. Okay, but then this is one of the physical quantities, so it it takes, I mean we should name some unit against it, so we call it radians. <coughs> Alright, so this is how the angle is quantified. You can take any radius, the ratio between arc line divided by r will be always fixed. And more is opening, more is L and R. Sorry, more is opening, more is L. R is keeping fixed. So the angle will increase. Okay. Now, here, if let us say this R is very, very large, extremely large, then will this be a close to a straight line or not? It will be close to a straight line. Okay. So we are going to use this kind of approximation to find out the great distances soon. Okay. Just I mean, I have coined this thing that if radius is very large, then this is close to the straight line. Okay, and if it is a straight line like this, you can claim that okay, this is r, this is some other length, that is some other length because this length is less than the r. Okay, but essentially we are treating it like an arc if r is very large. So all these lengths, the point connecting this point to any point on the straight line should be same. We are treating it same for all practical purposes. Okay, if R is extremely large, like 1 lakh kilometer and things like that. Okay, and more so if theta is less. If theta is like 0 0.01 degrees, then it will be like this, extremely less angle. I mean, this angle is very large. This is like oh, more than 2 degrees. I am talking about 1 by 1000 of this angle. Then the arc length you can even more approximate like a straight line. Okay, so we are going to use this approximation soon. Okay, now similarly we also quantified last class something called solid angle. What is a solid angle? The amount of opening which has through the surface like this. This is the amount of opening in 3D. Okay, this is also quantified. Oh, what is the value of this? Suppose this is the amount of uh, opening, this one. How we quantify this? This is denoted by sigma. Sorry, oh, ohm. Huh. Huh. So, how to quantify this? It's the radians. It's the radians. It is equal to surface area, you draw by the radius. Right. You draw a sphere okay, of radius r. Whatever is the surface area, this surface area divided by r square is this solid angle. Okay. This we are not using much in physics. It is just good to know. Okay. The so surface area divided by the radius square is a solid angle. Here we draw a circular arc, here you draw a sphere. Are you getting it? These are all imaginary. You don't need to actually draw it. You can imagine a sphere, whatever is a cutout of the surface area through the solid opening, that divided by r square is a solid angle. Okay. For example, here, if this corner, if using this corner, if I draw a sphere, only one eighth of the sphere will be enclosed by this solid opening. You understood what I am saying? Look at that. That corner, if I draw a sphere okay, of radius r, then only one eighth of the sphere will be covered. One by eight. Okay. So the surface area of one by eight sphere is one by eight into four pi r square. That divided by r square is the solid angle of that. Getting it? So, you know, like that we define this solid angle also. Okay. So, now, the way we define the angle, it really helps us to calculate the great distances. Okay. One such example we have seen in the previous class towards the end, we used what? Parallax method. We used parallax method to determine the distance. Okay. I will just uh, quickly revise it. Okay, write down parallax method.
This is what we did last class. What we did was we knew that distance between the two eyes. Let's say this is I one and this is I two. Okay. Okay. Shh. Keep quiet. What we did last class was that we have all all of us have two eyes. Okay. And suppose we know the distance between the two eyes. Okay. What we do is that we place, let us say, a chalk or anything in front of us. Then we close one of the eyes. Suppose chalk is over here. Okay. And then look, look that chalk. What will happen is that your your line of sight will pass through the eye like this. And suppose there is an obstacle on the board. Okay. Those who did not come. It's difficult to. We have to do this again, probably. Okay. So what what we did was we have placed few markers on the board like this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then what we did was we placed a chalk in front of us or a pen. Then we look through one of the eyes. What will happen is that the chalk may coincide with marker one. If you look from the right head, right eye, it may coincide with one. Okay, so that is what this. Let's say this E one. If you're looking from E one, this could be your marker one. Okay, then you close the close the first eye and open the second eye. You see that the the marker the the marker which coincides the chalk is now let's say six. So you'll we'll see that it is six. Okay, you can do it now also. You can see that if you look at the object through one eye and then through the other eye, the object seems to be moved relative to the board. Okay, now this is what the diagram of that. This is your uh, pen or chalk. Okay, these are your two eyes. Okay, and this is a distance. This is one marker one and marker six. So if you know the distance between marker one and six. Then you can see that these are alternate opposite angles. Angle is same. So arc length divided by this distance should be equal to this arc length divided by that distance. Okay. So if you know how far is the chalk from your eye, let's say this is D1, this is L1, this is L2, and this is. D two, then you can say that L one by D one is equal to L two by D two. Okay, so you can get the value of D two if everything else is known. This is what we did last class ten. Understood? So we we'll continue from here. Okay, we are going to use parallax method. All right, and we will calculate uh, the. Distances of. How do we get L one by D one? Is it L one by absolute or radius? L one by D one. Arc length divided by the radius. Oh yeah. This is angle. This angle. That arc length divided by D two is this angle. Both are same. Okay. Don't miss any class, guys. Become difficult for me to revise what we did in. 3 hours in just 15 minutes